Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and in this video today, I'm going to be giving my official Tampa Bay Buccaneers 2022 draft class grades. Hopefully you guys all enjoy this video. Let me know your Tampa Bay Buccaneers 2022 draft class grades down in the comment section below. I would love to see them. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers selected eight total players in this draft class, and they did a lot in terms of moving around. They traded back. They traded up. They did so many different types of things, selecting so many different types of players. Some that people are big fans of, others that people are not big fans of, and we're going to be covering it all in this video today. So again, hopefully you guys all enjoy this video. So let's dive right into it with the 33rd overall pick in round number two of this draft. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers selected Houston defensive end Logan Hall, which I gave a B plus grade. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers originally had pick number 27. They traded back with the Jacksonville Jaguars, which gave them a little bit more ammo to move around in the later rounds of the NFL draft. And they did end up selecting Logan Hall, which was rumored to be the guy that they were probably going to select at pick number 27 anyway. And Overall, I give this a B plus because I think it is a very good pick that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers made. I know that people were very critical of this draft class by the Bucs, but in my opinion, you know, starting off right off the bat, the Buccaneers got a guy who could start them right away in Logan Hall. Obviously, the situation with Ndamukong Sue is still up in the air as to whether or not he will or won't return to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but even if he does, I still believe that Logan Hall will be a solid contributor right away for this team. I believe he is probably the best pass rushing defensive end that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have right now whenever you compare him to guys like, again, Ndamukong Sue, although he's currently not on the team. Will Goldson and some of the other guys that they have along that defensive line. I think Logan Hall offers the most the most athleticism, the most speed, and the most in pass rushing capabilities as well. I know people are going to point out his things that he has to work on regarding to his run defense and things along those lines. Logan Hall has even admitted that he has to work on his run defense going into the NFL. But overall, I think that he is in a very, very good position to succeed. He has a lot of good mentors there in that Buccaneers defensive line room with guys like Vita Vea, guys like Will Golston. If they bring back Indomitian Sue, that's another guy who can grow and mentor Logan Hall in his early years of his career. And overall, Hall, I think, is going to be a very productive productive player for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, not just in year number one, but also in future years as well. He could be a starter right away if you needed him to start, and at the very least, I think that if Indomitian Sue does come back, Logan Hall is going to give you a lot of good pass rushing ability as a rotational player along that Buccaneers defensive line, and you traded back, you got some more picks, and you still ended up getting the guy you were probably going to take at pick number 27. So I give it a B-plus grade all around. I think it was a very good move. I know the people were upset that this was not Devontae Wyatt, but, you know, hey, it just kind of goes to show that some people's perception of where the Buccaneers value players is different than what the team actually has in terms of player values. That's always an important thing to note. So Logan Hall, I give it a B plus grade. The Buccaneers were not done making selections in the second round with the 57th overall pick in round number two. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers selected Central Michigan offensive guard Luke Gedeke, and I gave this pick an A-, minus, almost an A grade, but an A- minus here because I really, really like this pick. I think that Luke Gedeke will probably be the starter at left guard, and this man is an absolute mauler. He is an absolute menace to opposing defensive linemen, just from a sheer attitude standpoint. I didn't think that one could get more aggressive than the stuff that we've seen from Ryan Jensen, but Luke Gedeke is certainly in, up there in terms of the aggressiveness meter. The man came in and said he is a glass eater. He wants to put fear in the eyes of defensive linemen. And just time and time again, this man is coming out here saying things like he is going to destroy people and all these other different types of things. The man is an absolute warlord. He's an absolute madman, and I am here for it. I love that type of attitude. I love that type of grit and determination. You want those types of things in your offensive linemen and guys who are going to be in the trenches there, and I think it is a fantastic thing to see. Luke Gedeke, I think he's going to give a lot of grit 
a lot of determination and a lot of just hard-nosed style of play for that Buccaneers offensive line in between Ryan Jensen and Donovan Smith. Now, will he be the starter right away? That remains to be seen. He probably will be competing with Aaron Sinney and Robert Hainsey for that starting left guard spot, but... You know, that is a high-level investment there in an offensive lineman for the Buccaneers. Yes, they did invest a third-round pick in Robert Hainsey last year. Yes, they have Aaron Stinney, who has looked good in the past. But it seems like the Buccaneers do very much like Luke Gedeke. It seems like he's probably the inside favorite to be that starting left guard come week one. And man, oh man, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to see this guy play. I gave Luke Gedeke the selection at pick number 57 in A- minus grade. Moving on to the third round, pick number 91 in the third round, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selected Arizona State running back Rashad White. And I also give this a B plus grade. I think that this was a good pick by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They needed a running back too after the departure of Ronald Jones to the Kansas City Chiefs. Keyshawn Vaughn, he has had some good moments, but it just seems like you know, there are definitely questions as to whether or not he will be that type of guy for the Buccaneers to step up in a bigger role. They did re-sign Giovanni Bernard, but from what we've seen from the past, the Buccaneers have a very finite, very specific way of using Bernard in their offense. So they did need that guy who will be able to come in, give a little bit of a relief to Leonard Fournette, and offer a lot of flexibility and versatility. And they got that guy in Rashad White, who I think offers you more than what Ronald Jones was offering, offering you as the running back too. We know what he can do as a pure runner. He had over 1,000 rushing yards and 15 touchdowns as a running back with Arizona State last year in college. And he's also a receiving back as well, which is something that Ronald Jones was not giving the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. White can catch the football. White can block in terms of pass blocking on passing plays. He definitely is more of a guy that you would want to see as a rotational type back in this Buccaneers style offense for a guy like Leonard Fournette as your starting running back. So overall, I think this was a good pick by the Buccaneers. Rashad White, he's going to give you a lot of versatility, going to give you a lot of different things to do, and I think he is a pretty lethal weapon and will continue to be so in this Buccaneers offense. Arizona State running back Rashad White taken with the 91st overall pick. I give a B plus grade. Next, in round number four, pick number 106, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers took Washington tight end Cade Otten in the fourth round. Folks, I give this an A- minus grade. I've actually seen a lot of people say that this is one of their more favorite picks in this draft, and it's understandable to see why. Cade Otten has all the potential to be a future starting tight end in this league, and he offers so, so much. He's got good frame, he's got good receiving ability, he's got good blocking ability, and overall, I think he's going to contribute right away if he is the tight end one, which, again, we don't know what's going on with Rob Gronkowski. Will he or won't he come back to the team? Or if he is tight end two in the case that Rob Gronkowski does come back, or if they go out and sign a veteran tight end somewhere else, I do believe that Kate Otten will contribute right away, especially in the red zone, be it as a blocker or as just a big physical receiving tight end. I think Otten will give you a lot of good play, a lot of good productivity and efficiency. And yeah, I'm excited to see what his future brings. I think he definitely, definitely has the potential to be a future starting tight end for this Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense. And yeah, I'm going to be pumped up to see what he can do in year number one. Again, this continues the theme of the Buccaneers really bolstering some of the fringe starting types of positions on their offense. You have Rashad White, who's going to be getting a decent bit of playing time. You have Kate Otten, who I think is going to be getting a decent bit of playing time. You have Luke Gedeke, who I think is basically going to probably be the starter at this point, depending on how his competition goes with Aaron Stinney and uh, also Robert Hainsey. So the Buccaneers did invest a lot in their offense here in rounds two to four. But the Buccaneers were not done in round number four. With the 133rd overall pick in round number four, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selected Georgia punter Jake Camarda with their selection. And I give this a C plus grade. I thought it was a fine selection that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers made. Probably wouldn't necessarily be what I would have done had I been making the selections for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but 
When you look at the punting situation, Bradley Pinion did not have the best year last year, not just as a punter, but also as a kickoff specialist as well. Jake Camarda has got an absolute cannon of a leg on him. He will be able to contribute right away. He's technically a starter, folks. And I know people have been very critical of the Buccaneers special teams unit the past couple of years. Jake Camarda could very well help out with that. We'll have to wait and see. He apparently has some very good hang time on his punts. You probably didn't expect to see punter analysis in this video, but we are here for it. And yeah, again, while it isn't something that I probably would have done, I do understand the logic and reasoning behind it. You also got to think about the Buccaneers if they do, or I guess when they decide to move on from Bradley Pinion. It will save about $3 million in cap space that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers can use to bring in depth at other position groups. And Overall, given what the Buccaneers did in this draft in its entirety at addressing other positional needs on the team, I think that it is fine that they took a punter, and I can't wait to see how Jake Camarda helps out with the special teams unit and hopefully improves the productivity and efficiency of that unit as a whole. But... In round number five, with the 157th overall selection, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selected Sam Houston State cornerback Zion McCollum with this selection. And folks, I got to give this an A grade for this pick. This was a slam dunk home run pick. The Buccaneers finally got a cornerback. There were so, so, so many people complaining that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had not selected a cornerback in this draft. There was so much talk. Oh man, they got a punter, but they didn't get a cornerback, which isn't fair to Jake Camarda in my opinion. Oh man, why aren't they taking a cornerback? Why aren't they taking a cornerback? And they finally got one here with the 157th overall pick. They traded up to make this selection, by the way, giving up a fourth round draft pick in next year's NFL draft, which in my opinion isn't too, too big of a loss in terms of draft pick value, because again, they're going to be picking very late in next year's draft, assumedly. And Zion McCollum is a very, very good athletic corner. He is built very similar to Jamel Dean. He has got all the speed, all the athleticism. In fact, he's more of an athlete than Jamel Dean. He was ranked the most athletic cornerback, I believe, or maybe even the most athletic player uh, in, I believe, 30 drafts, something along those lines. Some ridiculous stat. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, go look it up. Uh, but point being, Zion McCollum is a stupidly high-level athlete, and that athleticism is now coming to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The dude ran, like, I believe a 4.33 40-yard dash, 6'2", 200 pounds. He's got all the makeup and all of the measurables and numbers that you want to see in a potential top-tier cornerback in this league, and I think he is going to be a solid addition right off the bat. What, was his, what will his role be? Is it going to be a cornerback four? Is it going to be a cornerback five? We don't know, but I do believe Zion McCollum is a future starting cornerback for this team. Him and Carlton Davis could very well be the duo moving forward, depending on what happens with Jamel Dean and Sean Murphy Bunting's contract situations. I think McCollum could come in next year and be a very good player for this Buccaneers secondary, and he could offer something right off the bat as well. I believe I even saw Keith Armstrong say, hey, we might try this guy out as a returner, which, hey, why not ball out King? But yeah, this is going to be an interesting pick for me. I cannot wait to see Zion McCollum grow and develop in this Buccaneers defense with the coaching staff that they have on hand and also getting mentorship from guys like Carlton Davis, Jamel Dean, and Sean Murphy Bunting as well to help grow and develop his skills as a cornerback at the next level. Zion McCollum, I give an A grade for that selection, which I do believe a lot of people would agree with me on that. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers were not done. They still had two seventh round draft picks in this draft with the 218th selection in round number seven. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers selected Minnesota tight end Co-Keeft. Co-Keeft. I believe I said that right. Co-Keeft was selected with the 218th pick in round number seven. And folks, I give this pick a B minus grade. I give it a B minus because Coke Keeft is a blocking tight end and that is kind of what his main role will be moving forward. He will offer you some special teams play but the big part is his blocking ability. The reason I give it a B minus is because this dude is an absolute animal at blocking and I genuinely do believe it will earn him a roster spot moving forward. This dude is a grinder in terms of his blocking ability. He will get down in the dirt. He said that himself that he is not afraid to get down in the dirt uh, and block with the best of them. So 
I do believe he is probably the best blocking tight end the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have on the roster right now, and it's going to be interesting to see how they use Coquif moving forward. Will they use him a lot in jumbo packages? Will they use him a lot in three tight end sets? Maybe even two tight end sets? You know, who knows? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. I'm excited for Coquif, though. I think that he will be a solid blocker for this team. Solid in the run game. Maybe they'll put him back there as fullback. Who knows? But I cannot wait to see this absolute madman of a tight end uh, go out there and just start wrecking havoc in the run blocking realm. It's going to be a lot of fun to see. co keeped I give a B minus grade. And then finally, folks, with the final selection, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had pick number 248 in round number seven. They took LSU edge defender Andre Anthony, and I give this one a C plus grade. Overall, a fine pick. I think that Andre Anthony could possibly carve out a role for himself as a special teams type player, maybe a backup edge defender, but I do know injury concerns have been a thing for him in years past, and we'll have to wait and see and monitor his health and his overall situation with that if he can stay healthy. But if he is able to stay healthy, I do believe he can carve out some type of a role for himself on special teams or as a backup edge defender as well. Let's just wait and see how he gets on. He's got a lot of good mentors there in that Buccaneers front seven, and I think that he does have a chance to carve out some role for himself, even as a seventh round draft pick, because again, you never know who's going to make an impact. But folks, that's all the draft pick grades there. To give an overall grade for this draft class as a whole, I'm going to give it a B plus grade, I think. B plus to A minus in that range. Uh, I think that this was an overall solid draft class for the Bucks, and I've seen people be overly negative. It is what it is, right? It happens every single year, but I've seen people be overly negative. But when I look at this draft class, I think the Buccaneers address a lot of needs. They got a defensive end. They got an offensive guard. They got a, let's just break it down even further. They got a defensive end who could start or at the very least be a fringe starter in Logan Hall. They got a potential starting offensive guard in Luke Gedeke. They've got a very solid running back two in Rashad White. They've got a very solid tight end two in Cade Otten. They've got a starting punter in Jake Camarda. I don't care what you say, he is a starter, and I think he will be a valuable starter at that. They got a very solid developmental cornerback in Zion McCollum, who a lot of people loved this pick, by the way, and believe that Zion McCollum can be an absolute beast in the NFL. They got a solid backup tight end slash possible special teams player in Keefe, and they've got a possible developmental backup edge defender in Andre Anthony as well. So overall, I think they did a very, very good job with the picks that they had. I loved the movement that they had in this draft as well. I thought it was very solid overall, and I think the Buccaneers got a lot of good work done and got a good amount of players who will be able to contribute right away in one way or another. So folks, that's it. Those are my player draft grades. That is my overall draft class grade for this Tampa Bay Buccaneers 2022 draft class. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about my grades. Do you agree with them? Do you disagree with them? Give me your thoughts and opinions. I would love to hear them. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope y'all enjoyed. And folks, I will see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.